and I am the founder and CEO of Project 365. So up there is my family. It gets very busy with 11 people living in one house. It's never get bored, you're always doing something, you're not standing still. You're either outside playing or inside doing something. So you never get bored. At the age of nine, I, it was Christmas Eve and mum, was a, mum, mum is a florist and she had flowers left over in the back of the car. And I go, what are you going to do with them? And it was Christmas Eve and she said, oh, it's no, no shop's going to be open, um, so I'll throw them out. And I said, well, how about we go give them out? And there was people, I, we stopped on, um, on the side of the road to anyone that we saw walking their dog or laying at the park hopped out and gave them a bunch of flowers and said Merry Christmas and hopped back in the car and drove home. So after they were all gone, we, I got home and said, why didn't we take presents to kids in hospital? Can we go do that? And mum just goes, no, we just shot for nine people in the family, so maybe next year. And I go, I'll make them there. And I asked mum how many days in a year and mum said 365. So. I said, my project, is, I'm going to create a project called Project 365 and make one, bet, one toy a day and give it away. And I did. It's, I started when I was nine, so I'm 14 now, so it's been going for five years. Um, while we're into my project, I, I, um, it grew from making a round ball that I found on the internet. Mum, mum had a sewing machine left out on on the table from doing a wedding stuff and I go, can I please use your sewing machine? And she goes, yeah, sure, but don't sew your finger. And um, yeah, I, I used a sewing machine, made this six-sided bowl of um, little round bowl and I was giving them away to little babies in the NICU unit for them to play. And then I found this other bigger bowl and put, started to put ribbons in it for taggies. So then, so if it, I called it a taggy bowl so then kids could just play around with it. And then, I got the blankets and then now I'm at Bears. This was uh, five, five years ago, this was five years ago, my first ever one I made. Um, his name's Wonky Bear, because as you can see, it's very out of place, <laughs> upside down and all over the place. And now they're at this stage. Um, five years later, this one took me five hours. I, I found this pattern and I go down to mum and she, I go, can I please make this? And mum goes, um, no, put it away. <laughs> um, and I went back up to my room and came back down 10 minutes later and said, can I please make this? And mum goes, no, I'm busy, off you go. <laughs> so I went up to my room and five hours later I came down with this, this creation, which I thought was amazing when I was, when I was nine. Not, I didn't think I'd be able to make it. Um, but yeah, it took me five hours to make that one and then I practiced and practiced and got to um, one hour to make these guys now. So, yeah, and, now, and then when I got further into my project, people said, can I please buy your bears? And I, I got, no, I, I didn't want to sell my bears. I wanted to keep them and just, I didn't want to, I wanted to keep them to give away um, to kids and adults that needed them. And, um, I, I kind of thought about it for a while and I went back down to mum and said, I'm going to start raffling and auctioning my bears so then we can start fundraising for cancer treatment and start fundraising to find the cure for cancer. And I did. I started raffling and auction, auctioning my bears and then I got this call from a, per, a um, director that came down and filmed this story for me and she got cancer. Um, and she couldn't fly because I wanted to come down to Hobart to, so we could meet up again and she couldn't fly so I said, I hopped off the phone and said, Mum, we've got to find a way, we've got to get her down here, we've got to find a way and I started Googling and I found a cruise and I said to Mum, we're going to get her on a cruise, we're going to get her down here and the main thing about the cruise was, uh, that the biggest thing I thought was, I went to Mum and said, well, if they go on a cruise they won't need to make their bed or do the dishes. That was, that was the biggest part to me. And um, I got Karen on this cruise ship and brought her, down to, brought her down to Hobart. And then by auctioning, raffling my bears. And I've also written my first, my first book um, about how this little, little wonky bear came 
came about and how I got my name Bumble. My nickname is Bumble and it was because my sister couldn't say Campbell, so she said Bumble. And that's just stuck since. For 14 years, it's just been, been around. So yeah, I've sent 11 people on kindness cruises in the last year. <coughs> in the last year. So it's been a pretty amazing journey in the last five years. So what does make a hero? A hero comes in all different shapes and sizes. They're not people that wear capes. They're, you see them every day, I'm sure. They're, well, there are lots of heroes in this room right now. I've, the ones that you've heard now, before me have all been heroes. They've all done amazing things. They don't wear capes. They, you walk past them on the street. Um, every day you're sitting next to some right now. They are all heroes. You all, all, all of you guys have a hero in your life. So heroes come in all shapes and sizes and they don't wear capes. Am I a hero? I don't think I'm a hero. People say I'm a hero, but in my mind, I'm just doing my thing that, that I came across with and that I wanted to do. And it was just my little bit to help. I don't think I'm a hero, but lots of people think I do. And yes, they, they're all, like, I'm, I, I think I'm doing a really cool thing and I just found this and this is what I love doing and I stuck with it. I've been doing it for the last five years, so I have stuck with it. And, but really, I don't think I'm a hero. I'm just doing my thing to help the community. Well, these are some of my heroes. This is Tracy. She, she was one of my friends. She was, her husband's a blogger and he's just big family, little income. He blogs about everything. He's got five, they've got five children and they're just, he blogs about the stuff. And then we were following, we were following these, this couple for a couple of years. And then she, Tracy went to KFC to drive through and she had a bowel aneurysm. And she went to hospital on the, she had lots of surgeries and was in a coma and they didn't think she would survive. So I made a bear for Tracy and sent that off. And this was at the time the kids went and said goodbye to the, to Tracy and it was a pretty horrific time for the kids. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be fun. So I sent a bear off to them and Bruce thought it was a, a dead animal when I sent it off. He, he opened the box and goes, oh, why have I got a dead animal? And um, he took it and he saw it as a bear and took it straight into Tracy and now she's up happy. This was a year ago, that photo. Um, when the doctor said she wasn't going to survive, she did. So she's one of my heroes. This is another hero of mine. This is Macy. Macy has, was diagnosed with multiple brain tumours um, many years ago, and I've stuck by her side um, for three years now. I've been working very closely with Macy, and I made her a bear, and she called it Cherry Roseberry. This is the pink, the pink and purple bear in the... Um, in the photo. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff with Macy. Macy is one of my biggest heroes. And this is one of the biggest people and one of my heroes that I've met. This is Olivia Newton-John. Um, when I saw that her cancer came back on the news, I instantly went and made her a bell and sent, th sent that off. And yeah, I went over to America to meet um, when I'd go on a TV show and um, a surprise from Steve Harvey was a message from Olivia Newton-John. And the message said, I can't wait to come down to Australia and meet you. Thank you for my bear. And yeah, she came down to Australia at the beginning of the year and it was a surprise for me because I thought I was going to the Olivia Newton-John Centre to just pass bears out to patients. And mum, mum kept it a secret from me and said, um, we're just gonna go give some bears out. And I walked around the corner and Olivia Newton John was sitting in the chair. Um, Olivia Newton John is one of a really big hero of mine. And this is Dr. Harris. He was he was over he went over to Thailand. He was on Th in Thailand for a holiday. And um, this was at the time of the um, Thailand cave rescue. And he saw that the kids were trapped in the cave, so he went and um, rescued some of the kids and stayed there till the last minute and why he was in the cave his dad passed away um, and he forfeited his time with his dad to get all those kids out and he stayed with the kids 100% of the time until they were all out so 
Dr. Harris did amazing things and he forfeited his time for the kids. Um, yes, yeah, so I made him a hero bear because he, he is a hero. And this is my dad. He is my biggest hero. He was diagnosed with cancer um, many years ago. Mum and dad kept it a secret from us, so we weren't worrying about it um, in our household. But I made him my first ever winner bear because I knew he was going to win against it. So I made him a winner bear and passed it over um, to him and said, you're going to win against it. Dad has had 42 surgeries over the last seven years um, for his cancer. But in our household, it's like, it's like, um, he, like, he, like it, you kind of feel like it's not around in our household because he doesn't let, us, let it, let it um, make us worry. It's always... It's always like a nice, calm household without cancer. It's not, he makes it so it doesn't affect us, which dad is my biggest hero. And also these are doctors, researchers, paramedics, police are also big heroes. They do amazing things, they save lives. They help a lot of people. And in this photo, this was when I went to the Living Newton John Research Center. And this is Karen, Karen in the, um, Photo. She's one of the funding um, people that fund the, the Living in John, and she makes all the research happen. She helps and saves people's lives, and one day they will get the cure. When I went over to the Living in John Centre, Olivia Newton John does a lot of stuff. She doesn't get a lot of privacy. She's always in the limelight. Um, yeah, she does a lot of stuff, and she's got this whole wellness centre, which is like home. You're, it's not like a hospital. It's where they go to get treatment, but it's like home. There's a kitchen, there's um, a courtyard, there's music therapists and stuff like that. It's just like home. So doctors, researchers are big heroes in, in our lives. They've, I reckon, always they've helped someone in your life at one point of time. And these, these, this is some of the photos from the 1700 bears I've made. They've all gone to heroes. All these bears that I'm holding have gone to all 1,700 different heroes. They're in their hands right now. So, yes, all those bears are in the hands of a hero. So, thank you, everyone. I'm Campbell from Project 365. Being kind and not me, we thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk, to find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.